from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. We're excited to talk about day five of Broncos training camp. Of course, it's day five, day six. I don't know. They take a day off in the middle there somewhere, and somehow the numbers get off. But it's the fifth day of practice, and we're excited to break it all down with you. And today, we'll start with the quarterbacks, as we have been all along. And... Yeah, we saw a little bit of good play from both quarterbacks. It looked like Teddy had a little bit more confidence, which is certainly good to see after kind of a rough go on Saturday. Uh, today, Drew Locke had uh, his first interception of camp during seven on seven. Pat Sertan uh, got his first first interception of camp. Um, but overall, I, I thought both quarterbacks kind of made plays out there. I give a slight tilt to Teddy if we're really keeping score. Yeah, I, w- I would have done the same. I would have given a slight tilt to, to Bridgewater, even without that last interception, which Benson slipped on, and it was you know it was a screen, so that it was just airmailed right to the the corner at that point. But um, you know, I, I thought Teddy just was more decisive today. Had a slightly better day. He was just quicker, more precise, and that you know that in the end, that's what it was. So slightly into Teddy for today, it puts it at three days for Drew, two days for Teddy for me. Um, each quarterback had an interception today. Uh, Drew had two of them, obviously. Uh, so that puts Teddy at four for camp and Drew for two, um, you know, for whatever that's worth. But yeah, I, I thought uh, I thought overall Teddy had a had a pretty decent day. Both both of them it wasn't a bad day for either. It just no, wasn't spectacular. Right. Um, you know, Drew was pretty sharp yesterday or last practice um, on Saturday. Uh, today he was a little more hesitant, and that was you know, and Teddy kind of bounced back. So it, it kind of looks like whoever's going against the twos with Parnell Motley out on the field is the one that's putting up numbers. I thought the best rep for Drew today for me was in red zone when he found Melvin Gordon for mm-hmm. the touchdown because he actually went through his progressions and the offensive line held up very nicely. He didn't scramble around, didn't move. And sometimes with Drew, it seems like if he's not seeing it by the first or second guy, he's he's starting to look to scramble. He's starting to look for lanes. Uh, he didn't do that. He stayed put. He stayed right in there. The blocking was there. He found Melvin Gordon right next to the goal line, walked in for a touchdown. For me, that was kind of the best rep overall. And that was against the first team offense, which, by the way, we do have to, to frame this a little bit appropriately. Teddy was against the twos. Teddy went against the twos primarily mm-hmm. today. Now, Teddy had a touchdown in red zone as well, but primarily Teddy went against the twos. Locke went against the ones. Right. You do expect a little bit of struggle if you're going to go against the first this first team defense because they are that good yeah and that, that seems to be the the cadence for training camp so far whoever's against the twos is look looks better you know and that, that's kind of an expectation what these guys going to end up separating himself but I, I think Vic you know after after hearing him talk uh, a couple of times I, I think Vic is really keyed in on these preseason games I, I think the, the the practice is practice but these preseason games are going to make or break this competition and you know Saturday was set up to be a showcase for Teddy and it, it didn't work out for him um, you know, today Drew could have put some, you know, some salt in the wound on that lead and didn't do it. I think these games are really what it's going to boil down to. And I want to say something about Drew Locke's interception during seven on seven, because by the way, Teddy Bridgewater also had interception the very next series right. out. Can you go over just very quickly how teams generally view the difference between team and seven on seven, as far as the weight they put on yeah. reps during that? Yeah. Seven on seven isn't very important when it comes to that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's no pass rush and all this kind of stuff. And then everybody out there knows it's a pass play because you're not running in seven. On- so it's, it, it's really, um, it, it's set up for the DBs to have a little bit of an advantage in terms of, you know, since they know it's a pass play. Um, and that was the thing. Sertan was in zone. Um, he kind of shaded the under on, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember who the pass was to. I think it was Cortland, but I could be wrong. Um, and just played it perfectly. Sertan just, just underplayed it perfectly. Drew didn't see him out to cut the route and, uh, and, and got an easy interception. And then, yeah, you're right. The last interception of practice. Pretty uh, fell down on that. It was, you know. Yeah, it was tough. And it was, it was at, uh, the new guy, Ferris. Mm-hmm. They ended up coming away. Right. Ferris, the yep. pride of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So good day for him. Sertan, by the way, uh, looks fantastic overall mm-hmm. he got uh he's had his couple of moments where again jerry judy those jerry matchups have been, everybody up though so yeah so jerry judy eating him up isn't isn't too much of a surprise i think for almost anybody but otherwise i think sertans look great he's got he got more reps today with the ones that i had seen all of camp yeah uh, and they're playing him inside on those you know the six db packages are kind of playing him inside so he can be there for run support with his size and also you know cover the tight end like we've been talking about on broncos country tonight so uh, you know, things are uh, the plan, as it were, all seems to be coming together. But it was cool, too, because even in red zone, putting him in the box at times or being able to move him around it, you know, usually if you're in red zone, especially if it if it could be a running down, if it's possible, it's not guaranteed to be a passing down to have the opportunity to have that guy with his length and his size in there to, to potentially work against the run. Mm-hmm. It is such a, va- a value It's such a benefit for this team and for the defense and what you can actually put out there. Yeah, um, 
you know, I, I thought there was some – it was interesting today because is, even though the quarterbacks weren't as effective, I thought there was a lot of great reps today. Now, it was a heavy screen day, um, you know, with throwing the ball, so defense kind of picks up on that early. I'm really looking forward to this this Vikings week so we can really kind of see how much of this is great defense, how much of this is these quarterbacks, and see if one of these guys can separate himself. I, there were a lot of quality reps out there today, even if the quarterbacks didn't look that great. I thought there was a lot of good stuff out there. Um, and it, the one thing that I really enjoyed seeing was the offensive line getting out there and blocking in space. Um, you know, it, it's not it's not as um, lead footed as it was last year with the Mardotson out there. I like the uh, very first rep for Teddy Bridgewater during team, uh, the 50 yard touchdown to Deontay Spencer. Now mm-hmm. again, it was against Par- Parnell Modley, who had a, who's had a tough practice. He's had a tough camp, and uh, he had a tough practice again today. Mm-hmm. But I, I liked at the response, and that's the thing for both these quarterbacks: the response they have to potentially a down practice drew Locke had a response to his yeah. really down practice and then to have teddy come out here very first play just on cork one deep to deontay spencer and it was a perfect pass i mean yeah. it was it was exactly what you'd want to see once again going against a 13 cornerback but at the same time it's good for both those guys because deontay spencer is also kind of a bit of a roster bubble guy yeah and the the best rep i thought for teddy today wasn't actually that one though i thought his best rep was it was a crosser for Cortland sutton near the sideline and he just placed the ball perfectly defense was in tampa too he hit the he hit the honey hole right there put it right there with some touch and anticipation for sutton it was a great pass um and I, I thought that was the best one of the day for him it was, it was just an absolutely beautiful pass that even though he lacks the you know the kind of the velocity um because of that anticipation and touch got there right where the defenders couldn't get it and right where his receiver could well and the velocity stuff comes into play when they're trying to run those uh, smoke screens uh it, screens and red zone man that, that's those are tough tough spots for because drew can get the ball out there in a hurry and you see the difference but when they played they ran plays where they were backed up against their own goal line they're in inside the five yard line mm-hmm. and he's trying to throw a smoke screen out there that's got to get there as fast as humanly possible because you you even delay a, a hair or mm-hmm. beats on that mm-hmm. DBs in the backfield grabbing that thing and, and just tiptoeing into the end zone. Right, and and that's the thing. You, you've got to muscle the ball on those screens. You've got to get it to them quick because you've got DBs that are lined up close to the line. They're going to break on that ball, and if you've got somebody with an outside shade there, they're going to be in prime position, as Ferris was today, to get that thing out. Benson, again, fell down, but he was in yep. position, uh, and that's, you know, you've you got to muscle it in there. Opportunity here for Justin Sternod as he got a second day of running with the ones. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Josie Jewell is going to be out around 10 days. So this is that, again, those opportunities here in training camp. And and again, you you don't want injury to be the reason necessarily, Mm -hmm. but simultaneously you do need to know what your depth looks like and what your talent looks like there. This is an opportunity for Sternod. It's an opportunity to take the job. I mean, we we knew that job wasn't secure. Josie's kind of defaulted into it the last couple years. This is an opportunity for Sternod to come in and take it. And so far he's looked pretty good. Bobby Massey got a third straight day at right tackle. Mm-hmm. And we saw two for Calvin Anderson, now three for Bobby. What do you think it means? I think Bobby's job, it's Bobby's job to lose, honestly, at this point. Calvin um, Anderson had some spectacular moments on the second team. He, did. he had second some great team. blocks today. Yeah, he had some good day, and, and he's going to be the, the number two right tackle. Like it's gonna, He's going to be the backup tackle. Um, Fleming, I think, has got some work to do on that. Uh, they brought him in for the experience, but I, you know, they're not tied to him. He's a guy they could trade, they could cut, they could whatever. Uh, but I, I think you're probably looking at Garrett and Massey as the tackles, and, and Calvin is is kind of the backup. I want to give another shout-out to some great blocking today. Natani Moody and Quinn Miners mm-hmm. on the second-team offensive line had some brilliant seal blocks out there. Uh, that, I mean, you saw today, I, I thought was maybe the best day for the running game. Now, of course, they're going to put the pads on tomorrow. We'll see what that looks like. But today, the the, the holes were just wide open mm-hmm. for these running backs. They were they were doing red zone periods where the running backs had five yards before anybody touched them. I thought that was very impressive. Yeah, it looked pretty good. Um, I, you know, and shout out to the offensive line who's getting, been getting eaten up by the defensive line a little yep. bit through the first couple of practices. Um, the other thing that, that, that stood out, and we want to make a note, Noah Fant had an egregious drop. Uh, by the, on the sideline, perfectly thrown ball from Drew. Great um, read by Drew too. Yeah, and, and an egregious drop, and he was upset about dropping that ball because uh, he, you know, he jogged over to to where we were standing down there on the side. And he was just, oh, he was. There were a lot of words I can't repeat right now that were uttered, <laughs> but he was upset with himself. So holding himself to the standard, knew it was his fault, and went back out there and and you know tried to. But he's been good in camp. I mean, yeah. overall, I mean, he he along with KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not a pattern of drops. It's not Tyree Cleveland, but no. it's, but it, you know, I mean, it was a bad drop, and he knew it. And I, I, I like the fact that guys can recognize the fact that they did something. You know, that I should have had that. Yep. You know, last thing I want to end on here is Bradley Chubb. We mm-hmm. can finally got him back out there a little bit for practice today. Some individual stuff. 
and he says he's going to be ready for the start of the season. I know that's going to be a big boost for this defense, and I know that that's that really right now it's more about the conditioning and just feeling right. Mm-hmm. But great to see him out there. Yeah, it was good to see him out there. wasn't much of a wasn't a huge impact today, but good to see him out there. And, and you know that'll come. Yeah, he knows what it's like coming back from injury. He's done it, you know done it before, so come back from surgery. Um, if he says he'll be ready by week one, he'll be ready by week one. All right, there you go. That is day five of Broncos training camp. We'll have another update for you tomorrow right here on Broncos Country Tonight.